Good afternoon, dear friends and colleagues. Being second parents to our students, we all share in the responsibility of bringing them up in the values of the church and of ensuring that not only would they become employable and productive, but that they would also have the strength of character needed to survive with dignity and integrity the day-to-day -day realities and challenges that would surely come their way. And I know that we, Polinian teachers, take this responsibility seriously. Unfortunately, as time passes, due to the lack of good role models for our students and their exposure to so many negative influences, with their value systems and beliefs being formed by what they see, read, and hear on social media, this part of our job gets more challenging each year. And now that we only teach online and we do not even know what our students are doing during our, our synchronous classes, I guess you may say the struggle is real. <clears throat> However, despite the lack of good role models, despite the plethora of negative content on television and social media, despite the fact that we cannot see them, Despite everything, character formation must go on. And we have to be more creative in our strategies to form their characters. So today, through this webinar entitled Character Formation Must Go On, Strategies for, digital, for the Digital Generation, we would hopefully become better equipped in this particular aspect of our job as teachers. So without any more further delay, may I now call on our dear senior high school academic team leader, Mrs. Aurora De La Vega for her opening remarks. Sister Maria Nilda Masirag, SPC University President, Dr. Helen Rigor, Vice President for Academics, Sister Maria Teresa Asensio, Vice President for Christian Formation, Sister Cherry B. Dagaira, Vice President for Administration. Sister Maria Lauren Risma, SPC, Vice President for Finance. Sister Maria Belinda Hernandez, SPC, Head of Guidance Services and Local Superior. Sister Eileen Bonifacio, SPC, our Principal of the Basic Education Department. Our College Deans, Dr. Antoinette Lacerna and Dr. Madeline Menor. My dear colleagues and members of the SPUQC family, a blessed afternoon to all. Wisdom in life is about building on rock rather than on sand. If you want others to hold on, hold to you in high esteem and you want to influence people in a positive way, building a good character should be a high priority. Honesty and integrity should be the bedrock on which you build character. As written in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. A man of truth is bold as a lion and lives above fear, for he has got nothing to lose to hide as he walks in the light. Character is built by a positive attitude. Your faith is what helps you triumph over negative circumstances as you trust God to make all things work together for good. Throughout history, character education has been the shared responsibility of teachers, parents, and members of the community who come together to support positive character development. Allow me to respectfully quote Cicero, within the character of the citizen, lies the welfare of the nation. Benjamin Franklin stated, nothing is of more importance for the public will than to form and train up youth in wisdom and virtue. Character is built upon the sacrifice one makes to make this world a better place. When you do deeds of care and compassion, your lives will shine its brilliance long after your work is done. Let me conclude by saying that culture, education, and technology will fail 
if it does not contribute to building character. Today, the world is in need of persons with, is not in need of persons with more money, mind, and muscle power, but it needs men and women of excellence and character. It is my hope and belief that everyone in attendance here will answer to this call and leave their names etched on a rack. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you, Ms. De La Vega. And now, friends, to introduce our speaker for today, may I now call on the very fashionable homeroom team leader of Senior High School, Mrs. Maria Teresa Padilla. Thank you, Ms. Remo. Good afternoon. It is my pleasure to introduce to you our guest speaker. He is a lecturer from the U University of Asia and the Pacific, UANP, in the Philippines. In his 30 years experience as a teacher, he has taught students from grade four to college, as well as, well as a postgraduate school in various subjects like English, Latin, creative writing, values education and literature, and among others. He is a graduate of the University of Santo Tomas, USC, where he earned a double degree in AB Journalism and AB Literature, and an MA in Creative Writing. At present, he is doing his dissertation for his PhD studies in the same university. He was a founding executive director of Westbridge School in Iloilo City, south of the Philippines. He was in the first batch of graduates of PAREF Southridge School, where he also taught for 15 years, occupying various posts, including principal of inter intermediate school, vice principal of high school, and department head of religion. At present, he serves as the executive director of Center for the fourth and fifth R's, respect and responsibility, advocating strong character development in schools, families, and communities. It is an international affiliate of the center based in the State University of New York in Cortland, New York, USA. He has been invited to speak all over the world, all, all over the country as well as in Washington, D.C., San Diego, California, USA, and Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Friends, please welcome Mr. Emmanuel Man Renton. Let us good give Sir Man a virtual clap. Hello, good afternoon, fellow teachers. I am very grateful to St. Paul University of Quezon City for inviting me to be with you this afternoon. Um, I am now here, still in Baguio, <laughs> stranded, happily stranded, uh, because I could not go back to Manila because of the situation. Well, uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to be with you. Let me share my screen. We are going to talk about a very important topic that uh, everyone, I think, is very concerned about. Character formation must go on. We're going to talk about strategies for the digital generation. I'm going to share with you concrete things later that you can do online in an online setup that will enable us to continue character formation in spite of the situation that we find ourselves in. Well, um, of course, let me right away give you the first reason why character formation must go on. It's because you are teachers of a Catholic school, an institution that uh, has a very strong Catholic identity. And more than a Catholic school, you are St. Paul University. Um, St. Paul wrote about uh, Caritas Christi Urget Nos. The love of Christ compels us. And that's the main reason why we want character formation to go on. Because the love of Christ compels us to make it happen, to make character formation go on in spite of the situation we find ourselves in. I think you agree with me when I say that really this situation is um, hindering us teachers, the adults 
uh, from doing what we want to be able to do with our young people. Mold their minds, form their character, raise them up to be men and women of character, of faith, because you are in a Catholic institution. And so that makes your objective even more special. You are not just concerned about seeing this uh, young people entrusted to you to become good men and women, men and women of character, but you also want them to grow up to be men and women of faith. That's the identity of St. Paul University uh, education. I mean, I don't think you are <laughs> um, being faithful to your identity as a Catholic institution if you are not helping these young people in your school to be men and women of faith. Now, we have a very serious problem. This pandemic is providing, is giving us a big problem, a very big headache for the um, obvious reason. For example, uh, this pandemic is depriving many people of the sacraments, of real reception of Jesus in his body, blood, soul, and divinity in Holy Communion. <laughs> and then um, this, is, this pandemic has deprived many, for example, of being able to go to confession. This is a terrible time that we are living in right now. And so now more than ever, we need to make sure that we do not fail in our effort, even in the online setup, to reach out, to reach out to every student entrusted to your care to make sure that they grow as a person and as a son and daughter of God in spite of the situation. So maybe we just need to try to make up for the absence of uh, uh, the sacraments with a lot of prayers, <laughs> never, um, never failing to remind the young people to implore the help of God in, the, in this situation that we find ourselves in. Now, here are things that are happening. You know it because when I describe this, I am not just actually describing the students. I'm also describing us, some of you, or if not all of us. This digital lifestyle that we are thrown into. <laughs> I mean, even before the pandemic, uh, we already have this technocentric lifestyle. Many of you, I'm sure, were there in the um, session that we had with the parents, and I described to the parents the kind of um, technocentric lifestyle of the young people today. Well, that also uh, refers to you. We are all uh, in front of the computer practically the whole day. <laughs> we are so immersed now in technology. Uh, having to run our classes online, all our meetings online, all the conversations we have with our colleagues online. So this is the kind of lifestyle that suddenly we are thrown into. Now, remember what I said last time when I was talking to parents? Please, this is irregular situation. While we call this the new normal, there's nothing normal about this. This is abnormal. <laughs> And that's why some of you, siguro iniisip ninyo, hindi ako kasing galing na teacher last year compared to my 20 years inside the classroom. Of course, because this is an unusual situation. So as I told the parents, I tell you now, dear teachers, fellow teachers, please be very forgiving with yourself. Don't punish yourself unnecessarily with thoughts like, maybe I'm not effective. Maybe I'm not as good anymore as a teacher. Uh, all these things are special situation. All these things are special um, circumstances that we find ourselves in. Don't punish yourself with the thought of maybe I am not good enough. No, uh, we are going to get back into the real normal sooner or later. And we will continue doing what we have been doing best. Teaching face to face molding minds, forming character inside the classroom with the students there right in front of us. So let's be patient and then be very understanding and then be very forgiving with yourself 
as well as with the students. Um, it was mentioned earlier by ma'am in the opening remarks. Minsan hindi mo alam, nakikinig ba ito mga estudyante ko? Are they listening to me? <laughs> uh, naka-off ang kanilang video. I don't even know if they're listening. I don't even know if they're actually there. Malay ko kung in-off ang video at saka nandun, nasa kabilang kwarto. Please, um, if a student comes to you telling you, ma'am, sorry, my data um, went out, my internet failed, my Wi-Fi went slow, please be forgiving with them as with yourself and don't punish yourself with the thought na Luloko, niluloko lang naman ako siguro ng batang to. Um, that's unnecessarily complicating your life. <laughs> I mean, by itself, life is already complicated. Please, wag nyo nang pahirapan ng sarili ninyo. Just take their word for it. After all, it's also true. I mean, maybe hindi siya nagsisinungaling. As you and I experienced already, right? Being in a meeting one day and then suddenly uh, our Wi-Fi disappears. Our smart signal becomes intermittent. Our internet goes slow. So we just have to take it as it is and then just do our best and look forward to the day when we will be back inside the classroom because it will happen sooner or later. Um, as I said, while I described the students, I am also describing some of you the sleeping habits of your students have become more irregular than ever. <laughs> uh, one is because, uh, yes, they splurge on K-drama, K trying to finish as many episodes in one night. Yes, YouTube videos, more than a billion of them are there available for them. Yes, social media is very tempting. Sometimes you... Uh, go to bed and scroll uh, scroll down and like here, comment there, share here. Before you know it, it's already 1 a.m. It's already 12 midnight. It's happening among students. And I know it can also be happening to us teachers. Sleeping habits are becoming irregular, have become even more irregular because of the situation that we find ourselves in now. And then this is something that you need to keep in mind. For teachers, for students, there is a certain feeling of isolation that is happening. It is very ironic. Ang feeling natin is connected tayo. Kasi nandito, we can see them in Zoom, we can see them in Google Meet, we can see them in the social media. But mind you, it's not the same connection. And now there are concerns uh, abroad and also now here in the Philippines that uh, the next pandemic, okay, we are going through this pandemic of COVID-19, but there is another pandemic that is happening worldwide, the pandemic of isolation, the feeling of being disconnected, of being disjointed. And I know it's not just with the students. Some of us are feeling this also. The, that it's just not the same, right? Dati, pagkatapos ng klase mo, punta ka ng faculty room. Nandyan si kumare, nandyan si pare, nandyan si sister, nandyan ang mga kaibigan mo, and you can actually just uh, take it easy, lie down in uh, the sofa, or uh, sit down in your comfortable chair, and then talk about anything that you want to talk about. Not about school, uh, about yung, yung adobong niluto mo kahapon, na perfect mix. <laughs> We are deprived of that. Everyone is deprived of that, students as well as teachers. And this is one um, reason why everyone is suddenly feeling a certain uh, isolation, that we are disconnected, that we are disjointed, that we are on our own. Now, teachers, please keep that in mind. Your students especially are the ones feeling this. They are on their own. They are not able to ask you questions as they used to be able to do inside the classroom. They are not able to immediately clarify something about the lesson. Uh, you give them modules. You give them asynchronous activities that they have to do on their own. 
And that is taking a toll. It's taking a toll on many students, as well as many teachers. <laughs> Feeling of isolation. Let us not be in denial. And let us have that in mind. If there is anything people need these days, it's greater connectivity, human connectivity more than anything. Of course, many of us now are thrown into this sedentary lifestyle. Tapos yung mga bata, bawal pa ng bahay, ano? The, they are inside the house, um, in front of the television, <laughs> uh, sitting on the chair. Sedentary lifestyle and people are getting affected physically. And then that at the same time that you have this uh, isolation, now there are more distractions available, easily available for them. At least nung may klase, sa loob ng classroom, bawal maglabas ng cellphone. Bawal uh, buksan ng kanilang computer at mag-Facebook uh, at mag-Twitter, mag-Instagram, mag-TikTok, mag, uh, um, bawal sa loob ng classroom. Now, their classroom is inside their living room or inside their bedroom or inside their house. And all those distractions that used to be bawal inside the classroom are now easily within reach. They have that constant source of distraction as you and I too are experiencing. While, okay, we have things to work on online, uh, papers to do, unit plans to design, asynchronous activities to put together and make available for them online, but um, we do it inside our house. And again, the television is there, the cable TV is there, the Spotify music is there. Uh, and many of these things we did not do or we did not have inside the faculty room as we were working and working on school um, matters. So all of us are subjected to this. Um, no wonder uh, you hear more <clears throat> and more of students and teachers complaining about neck pain, back posture, back ache. Um, yeah, because suddenly we find ourselves here in front of the computer, in front of the laptop, uh, practically the whole day. And this is affecting everyone physically. For the young people, they are getting shorter and shorter attention span. It is much easier to be a bully now while hidden away online. And yes, there are cyberbullying happening um, and you don't know about it. You may never know about it because now it's happening at home and among them uh, of students uh, lambasting a friend or a classmate in TikTok, negative comments, um, neg insulting remarks, hurtful remarks, <clears throat> or maybe not hurtful, but remarks that um, affect the person without the other one knowing or realizing that uh, hurt the self-worth, dignity, <laughs> or, um, well, the way one person looks at himself. And then um, research tells us that, um, let me see, this situation now is stunting the imagination in children. They're not able to work with their classmates as they used to inside the classroom. They're not able to exchange ideas as much as they did when they were inside the classroom with their classmates easily available to hear them, to listen to them. So the situation now is affecting even the imagination in children. Of course, not to mention for you and me and the students and also the parents who are doing work from home eye and ear problems, right? Uh, now, you and I even may be complaining more frequently about, bakit ako nahihilo? I feel dizzy. Parang ang sakit ng mata ko. Parang ang... The, all these are brought about by the present situation. And then the young people at home, away from the sacraments, deprived of grace from Holy Eucharist and confession, and worse now, at home, they are under constant attack by uh, presence of pornography, 
presence of harmful images that are easily available in the internet. Even young people, very young people, basta they already can uh, enter the internet, they can be subjected to the most gruesome, harmful images, explicit videos more available to them. And ngayon, ang problema is students can say, Mom, but I have to be online. Meron kaming asynchronous activity. I have to finish this project. I have to meet with my classmates. And so, if the parents are not there supervising, are not as present, then uh, you have these students now um, engaged even more uh, in pornography. Of course, social media is a major um, enemy at this point. Social media, as I'm going to talk to the students, uh, has positive points. But the problem is parabang the very same positive things are bringing about the negative things. That's what I'm going to talk about with the students when I meet with them. And yet, this is now the culture among the young people that the social media is part of life. <laughs> and some students, some young people, because of lack of supervision, because of lack of guidance, because of lack of training, because of, uh, I don't know, maybe we are not able to say it enough. They are being manipulated by social media, by TikTok, by Facebook, by Twitter, by Instagram. Um, and it is not good because generally, generally, social media is promoting a culture where drugs and lack of sexual boundaries are apparent. I have to be very careful when I talk to young people about TikTok because many of them are so into it and... Uh, invest hours and hours to be able to put up those 15, 30 second videos. But as I said, it has positive things. Really, it is very creative. I mean, they have to be very creative. They have to be good dancers. They have to. But the problem is, as I see, 80%, for example, of the um, common dance moves that uh, are very popular among the young people, 80% easily, are border on salacious, uh, indecent, sometimes even immodest moves. Uh, this is something that uh, uh, is appalling, but it's becoming the culture of the young people. And I know some young people once you start talking badly about TikTok, they will stop listening to you. <laughs> they will condemn you and say, you don't understand. You just don't know. Well, I know I spent hours and hours uh, over the summer break um, getting deeper into the algorithm of TikTok, getting deeper into the, um, the engineering features that the techno people put into the program that really manipulates them to have that maximum desire for likes, for followers, for shares, for comments, for hearts. It's manipulating the young people. If they can use it for good, fantastic. But un un unfortunately, the algorithm of Facebook, of uh, well, Facebook as well, um, especially TikTok, is designed to um, manipulate self centeredness, vanity. I mean, in the first place, you post a video featuring yourself. And then you look at their TikTok account. We, it's not just one video. It's 120 videos of them dancing, talking, reacting, uh, talking, um, whatever. So that is the culture that the young people are growing up in. In the end, uh, someday, sooner or later, <laughs> hopefully, itong mga kabataan makikita nila, tika muna, technology is not exactly building the best of our social skills. In fact, it is distorting connectivity in the real sense of the word. Distorting connectivity of humanity. 
may kilala kayong estudyante, they prefer to text than to talk. Or are you thinking lahat ng estudyante nyo ganyan na ngayon? That is the kind of culture that this um, technology has brought about. Many young people prefer to connect through cell phone, through text, through Facebook Messenger, through Viber, than face to face. That's not social skill. That is <laughs> um, problematic. And that is what we are seeing now among many young people. So, no, no need to mention. Yes, it has been a problem. Technology addiction is real. <laughs> when Ma mentioned earlier in the open remarks, the struggle is real. Yes, if the students don't know how to struggle ad against addiction, that is what the environment is manipulating them all to become. Technocentric, addicted to gadgets, addicted to cell phone, tablet, laptop, computer, internet. To the point that now, in many houses, gusto mong parusahan ang bata, confiscate the cell phone. It's one of the worst punishments. Gusto mong parusahan ang bata, turn off the Wi-Fi. It's one of the worst punishments <laughs> you can ever give to a young person today. So then, this is the kind of world that we are living in right now. And the young people have to realize, I mentioned this to the parents, they are living behind a digital footprint. A digital footprint that enables them, uh, that leaves behind, um, well, there goes their privacy. And I, I will mention this especially to the students. I know of many young um, professionals who did not get the job they are applying for because the HR officer looked into the social media of the applicant and found him to be too uh, shallow, too, um, how do you call that, um, frivolous, too um, rapidly um, anti-government, anti-people, anti-whatever. So that is... <laughs> A situation that young people today have to really come to realize they are leaving behind a digital footprint whatever they put online is going to be there forever and that may come back someday to haunt them as what is happening in many situations now now research is telling us being plugged in constantly like you and me too we are plugged in now, because of this online setup, it's adding a new layer of stress. That's why some of you may be thinking, bakit ganon? Para bang one week pa lang ang school year? Parang pagod na pagod na ako. Yan. It happened last year, right? You remember? Para bang it's so exhausting now. Everyone now needs a mental uh, wellness break. <laughs> Schools now came up with uh, something like that, a mental wellness break. Wala naman dati niyan, di ba? But now, it seems everybody needs it. Yes, because this thing of being online is putting in another layer, a totally all new kind of layer of stress for everyone. I mean, it's stressful enough for some of you here listening and then biglang humina ang internet mo. And then you're wondering, oh no, I'm missing... That's a stress that we didn't have inside the classroom before. We knew we were inside the classroom. The stress of, nakikinig kaya to mga batang to? The stress of, um, are they taking notes? Are they listening? I mean, all these things at the back of our mind as we are giving online classes, that's another layer of stress. And all of us are going to do this. Of course, the young people today with uh, gadget the whole day, texting, computer, that's also going to bring about this phone thumb and tendonitis and uh, carpal tunnel syndrome and all that. Not to mention, of course, when a person does not get to deal with other human beings really physically, emotionally, and face of it, then 
um, they don't develop empathy. And that is a big problem that is happening among many young people today. They can be spending the whole day just in front of the gadget, not dealing with other people, not dealing with other human beings, and there goes empathy. They don't learn. They don't learn as well as we used to in face-to-face -face setup. Empathy, feeling for others, being able to share emotion with others. And then, of course, with the computer games that they play, the more um, computer time that they have there, they can be subjected to this online violence through video games, through movies in Netflix, uh, with a lot of violent scenes, killing, murder, rape, assault. Many movies are like that, and the young people are subjected to it. So I think what we need to put is more than ever. <laughs> Character formation must go on now more than ever, given the situation that we find ourselves in, given the kind of environment that I just finished describing to you. Okay, my dear fellow teachers, we are teachers, and we want to continue being good educators, effective instruments, especially because you are teachers of a Catholic institution, which makes your work as educator become almost like a mission, vocation, a calling from God. Effectively, as teachers of a Catholic school, our main employer is not sister, is not the president, is not just the principal, the main employer that we have, is Christ himself. And the love of Christ compels us to be effective teachers. We've got to be effective teachers in spite of the environment, or maybe I should say precisely because of the environment we find ourselves in. Here are four beliefs that I want you to foster if you are to be an effective teacher. Number one, we still continue to be the ones who will make a difference inside the Zoom room, the Google Meet room, the Microsoft Team room, whatever online um, platform you're going to use. It's still you and me as teachers who will make the difference. Number two, by far, the most important factor in school learning is the ability of the teacher. Your ability, my ability to get the students to understand, to learn what they need to learn, to get to, to work on projects that will really make uh, understanding happen. By design, we will make the students learn. And then, not just learn, grow as a person, as a man or woman of character. Now, Yes, there is an extensive body of research and knowledge about teaching that must be known by the teacher. And so I encourage you. This situation is special, online teaching. We, many of us, if not all of us, we're not trained to do this. This is not what we learned in the School of Education. <laughs> um, what we were trained to do is how to teach inside a classroom. But... Suddenly, we're thrown into this situation and the school is saying, no, no, let's not allow this pandemic to stop learning from happening, to stop um, our making a difference in the lives of our students. That's a mark of optimism. That's a mark of Christian hope that we didn't just throw the towel or throw things in the air and say, voila, voila. Um, um, let's take a break. No school, uh, we cannot, no. The school said, let's do the best we can to still continue making learning happen. And in this online setup, there may be a whole new set of knowledge that we need to learn. I encourage you, explore. Google will help you. Google it. Online learning tips for teachers. Best strategies from the world over about being effective. Uh, teachers online. Let's learn them because there are many strategies that are available there. Um, as I always tell teachers in seminars, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. There are thousands of teachers out there who already put many things in place. 
even the subject you're teaching for all you know all the things you need to come up with the new materials you have to do for asynchronous activities they're all available there online it's just a matter of knowing where to look or explore them but yes our mindset should be like that if i'm going to be effective in this setup i have to learn um, an extensive body of research and knowledge and then number four the teacher must be a decision maker able to translate the research and body of knowledge about teaching into increased student learning but wait our topic is character formation and so i also qualify that and say the teacher must be decision maker able to translate the research and body of knowledge about teaching into increased student character formation i'm going to share some of concrete some concrete strategies that you can use so that character formation goes on as i spoke with families when the virtual adventure began i asked each one what i could do to help during this trying time alam niyo yung sagot ng mga parents please turuan mo naman ang anak namin to be mature and independent <laughs> they're more after character now they're more after character they realize uh, if their son daughter at home is to be successful as a student in this online setup he she has to be mature and independent able to work on his own kahit wala ang parents because they are also doing work from home okay that's what they say as one parent said can you teach him to be good while i'm busy <laughs> yeah because that's the situation the the parents are also at home but they also need to do work from home everyone to his own gadget everyone in front of his or her own uh, laptop computer desktop doing work from home so the parents will appreciate very much if teachers can you please get my son my daughter to be mature and independent so that i can uh, work while you um, do the online learning so the um, pandemic i mentioned earlier that is happening is uh, isolation and side by side with isolation there is now this new pandemic also of narcissism which is now at an all time high with all this available technology um, apps like the social media tiktok um, um, twitter facebook uh, instagram all these social media really are meant to foster the certain self-centeredness which is nothing else but narcissism well one of the experts on character formation dr michel borba says we take our kids to many practices sports music etc but do they practice rehearse over and over being a good person character formation must go on let me share with you some reasons that make our profession as teachers the noblest of professions and then you will see why we need to continue this nobility even in the online setup here are reasons sabi ng mga um, educators of a high the first class degree why their profession is knowledge uh, i'm sorry is noble well number one, it's because we teachers are able to impart knowledge believe me you continue being able to do that even in the online setup therefore yes kahit ganitong setup we continue doing a noble task number two. In fact, we teachers are the ones now giving strong hope to the students, to the young people. The fact that we continue teaching, the fact that we don't give up and say, "Wag na academic lockdown, uh, talagang hindi kayo." No, we say, "Let's continue learning. 
let's use technology in order to make things happen in in order to still continue making the students learn that's hope that's the complete opposite of despair that's the complete opposite of hopelessness uh, which really we could have fallen into given the situation diba i mean your your principal your school university president could have said uh, hindi talaga kaya we cannot insist on everyone having wifi at home we could have said things like that but no we said no let's be the optimism of the generation and make them realize we didn't quit we didn't give up i tell you 20 years from now those students of yours now inside the classroom will look back to these years and probably say wow it was during those years in the online setup when i learned what it means not to quit not to give up and to continue hoping number 3 the teaching profession is a noble profession noblest of professions because we're able to teach morals and values which you do again that you continue teaching even if i know many of you are putting in more sacrifice than usual i mean let's not deny it some of you are also grappling with technology and you could have given up as i know some teachers gave up but you don't you didn't you continue teaching that by itself is showing by your example to the students what it means to be resilient to be persevering to be hopeful to be for, to have fortitude to have strength of character you see from your example you are teaching morals and values we are building character and that's why we're going to talk in a while about sige nga what are the concrete things that we can do inside the classroom so that character building continues this is what we're doing we continue educating the young people about the difference between right and wrong can you imagine if we did not resume school year if we did not continue teaching the young people are going to be learning only from the news from headlines and you and i know it can be very very uh, frustrating the headlines these days are very pathetic i mean politicians trying to destroy each other politicians uh, being reported for corruption i mean government agencies being involved in uh, billions of pesos uh, unaccounted for and things like that i mean that is what the young people are also being subjected to in the news day after day after day who now is going to tell them who among these politicians should not be a model who among these um, personalities that we should not um, be swayed by we teachers we have to speak up we have to educate we have to continue educating the young people the difference between right and wrong we are not quitting that's what makes our profession noble and mind you they listen to us they listen to teachers sometimes they even listen to teachers more than they listen to parents <laughs> and then we encourage effort that's what makes teaching a noble profession we keep on pushing our students to become the best versions of themselves to become better human beings that's why you remember um one of the things i always tell teachers in seminars you and i are engaged in the business of enhancing lives yan ang trabaho ng isang guro we are engaged in the business of enhancing lives we encourage them to continue striving to be better to overcome their weaknesses to go for excellence we encourage effort and then some of them may have problems with um, esteem and you teachers are in a position 
to nurture self-confidence and to wake them up to the reality na, Uy, believe in yourself. You've got what it takes. I know some who were not even as good as you but were very successful. Kaya mo yan. You're even better than them. That's what teachers do, right? I mean, you look back to the times when you, because of your words, there is that student who bloomed um, and turned out to be one of the best you've ever had thanks to the timely advice you give, the kind remarks that you drop. We have to be always, in fact, conscious of this. Our words are very powerful. May we never be a source of put-downs. May we never be a source of a student losing confidence because of what we say, but rather the opposite. They strive to be the best that they can be thanks to the words that we say, thanks to our encouragement, never tiring encouragement. We are the ones who make them do team spirit, teamwork. That's why teachers, please make sure you continue looking for ways of making the students do work as groups um, in partnership with uh, another classmate because this is one thing that they have been deprived of because of the pandemic. But no, you can creatively come up with activities that will, uh, that will necessitate them working with a team, a group, a classmate, a partner, um, meeting together to be able to come up with a plan because they can. I mean, FB Messenger is there, Viber Messenger is there, um, texting is there. So even this um, setup, we can make them, uh, we can foster team spirit among them. And then we continue cultivating love and friendship in this world now, especially that is like, parang andilim dilim, ano? there's so much hatred, so much anger. You read it in the news. Uh, we read of Afghanistan, we read of uh, uh, wars here and there, we read of um, all these that, that make the world seemingly a loveless place. No, teachers, we can make the students realize in spite of all these things, there are many good things that are happening. Charity continues to reign. Love continues to be present at home in families, in communities, the community pantry, people reaching out to the needy, uh, people going out of their way in order to try to um, brighten up the lives of those who are suffering because of the pandemic. We are the ones who can make this happen. And then number 10, motivating constructive behavior. So we effectively, with all this, we say, ay oo nga. The conclusion is character formation must go on because we are doing such a noble task. We cannot fail in this. Let's continue with our discussion. Now we're done. We're convinced character formation must go on even in this online setup because the young people need us now more than ever. The um, work that we do is, has become far more important, in fact. If you think more deeply about it, even with this online setup, the work that we do has become far more important than usual. It's the most effort-consuming profession of all time, especially if you are concerned about young people growing up to be good. Pagising mo palang sa umaga, na iisip mo na yung studyante na kailangan ng tulong, itong studyante na hindi nagpapakita sa klase, parang laging late mag-submit, iniisip mo pa kung paano ko siya tutulungan. Ayaw kong bagsak lang ng bagsak because that is a mark of a good educator. He, she is always looking for uh, ways to make the students succeed. That, that's a mark of being a good educator. And so that makes our work more effort-consuming not to mention time-consuming. So what do we do? Here it is. Here are some things we have to keep in mind if we are to make character formation go on. Please, teachers, contain, uh, maintain, continue to maintain high standards for the benefit of your students. Let's face it, merong 
ordinary teachers, and then there are exceptional special teachers, right? I mean, may mga ganon, may, may pagkakaiba. We have met average teachers, but you and I also know excellent teachers. The session we have today, my dear fellow teachers, is nothing else but an invitation to all of you. Teachers, given the situation, let us be excellent teachers, not mediocre, not ordinary, not even just average. Let us work hard to be the excellent teachers that your school wants you to be, that your university wants you to be, and that our students need us to be. It's a need now, more than just a choice. But yes, it's also a choice. Today, we are going to choose. I want to be the best teacher I can possibly be. Without teachers, our young people and upcoming generations would find themselves in a much darker place. With all these things na nababasa natin sa tungkol sa politicians, sometimes you cannot help think, sino bang naging teachers niyan nung grade school? Parang sana tinuruan sila about honesty, uprightness, love for the poor, kindness, generosity. I mean, all these virtues that you and I value very much. And then, we being a Catholic institution, in a Catholic country, iniisip natin, bakit ganun? Parang saan tayo nagkamali? Saan nagkamali ang simbahan? Saan nagkamali ang mga pare sa pagtuturo ng tama? We look into what else can we do as teachers of a Catholic institution, as educators. Where else can we do? What else can we do? Where else can we improve in so that we will not have to contend in the future with uh, corrupt politicians, dishonest uh, local government people, uh, immoral leaders, when these are the ones we have been working very hard to prepare, to, to produce. The world is going to be a much darker place if we don't, once and for all, put our foot down and say, enough is enough. Let us make sure this new generation of young people will grow up to be excellent men and women of character. After all, we're not just teaching subjects. We're teaching students. That's why in the very first minute, binanggit ko kagad, you are entrusted with students to take care of. You're not just given a subject to teach. You are given students to take care of, to mold the minds of, to form the character of. Let us now go into concrete tips. What can we do so that our online classes will continue building character forming character. Number one, continue running your school, teaching your class with the pillars of character in mind. What makes you, St. Paul University, the school that you are? What are your core values? What virtues do you consider to be important qualities of a Paulinian? Well, in the prayer earlier, we mentioned that we are Paulinians and that we are going to be Christ-centered. Okay? That is a pillar of character. Make sure that even in this online setup, we never fail to talk about students, class. My dear students, please center your life on Christ. Get to know Christ. Uh, be Christ-like. Follow the virtues that we learned from Him of kindness generosity, charity, love. All these have to come out of our mouth kahit anong subject ang tinuturuan natin. Because that's what we are as teachers in that specific school, in this particular university. We have our core values. Well, a suggestion, in fact, I know I'm addressing... Um, teachers, I, some of you might be officers, 
um, I tried to find out what are the core values of St. Paul University of Quezon City. And I went to the website and I tried to look for it. What specific values that the, stu that the university stands for? Is it faith? Is it love? Is it kindness? Is it excellence? Is it, I had a hard time finding it. <laughs> you might want to uh, see to it if St. Paul University of Quezon City is going to be a university of character that values character. It has to be uh, th in the most prominent place you can ever find it in, the first page, the home page. As soon as you land there, this is what a Paulinian is, uh, a person of faith, um, pious, uh, prayerful. Um, what is it? I, I'll, I'm going to be very interested to know. And parents, normally, that's what they look for. Um, they don't just look for uh, uh, san bang board exams nagtatap itong skwelahan na to. Many parents, especially good parents, they first look for what are the values that the school stands for that they are trying to instill in the students because I want my child, I want my son, I want my daughter to have those values. Let us make sure it's very much alive that we continue to be living according to the pillars of character that our school stands for. If you have not done so yet, as many schools already do, agree this year, let us have a specific um, battle cry. Let us agree on specific uh, must-haves that our students, um, that teachers will work very hard to put in place. So um, in many places, in many classrooms, the must-have, number one, is the student will have to be con continuously courteous, kind, caring, responsible. Okay. Now, um, if you have not started meeting your students yet, then this is one of the first things as a class, especially with the class advisors. This is one of the first things that you should discuss. Class, what are the top three virtues that you think we should um, be known for? Our class should become known for get it from them um, online set up make them um, agree make them vote if you want even uh, maybe because um, as people as your students will suggest sir gusto namin yung ano hard working given this setup uh, punctual sige okay lagay natin yan um, caring kasi kailangan natin ng support ngayon make them come up with those um, values and then Kung more than three, if you come up with a list of four or five, make the class agree. What are the top ones that we will make sure we will commit ourselves to as a class? You see? Um, and you can also do that in your respective subject. Okay, class, my subject with you is math. I know I'm not your class advisor, but as a math class, let's agree. What will be, um, how will our class be known by um, that there is no cheating, that we reject cheating, that we value honesty, uprightness, and sincerity, truthfulness. I don't know, whatever it is. But if you agree with the class um, on, that, on those virtues, then they become your pillars of character effectively. Well, this is very much like the strategy of Hal Urban that I teach um, teachers um, on the first day of class the teacher will ask the students, okay, class, what kind of classroom, Zoom room, Google Meet room, whatever platform you're using, you don't like? Um, Sir, ayaw namin yung ano, andaming absenteeism. Okay, let's list, the, let's list that down. Ayaw namin yung <clears throat> parang competition, parang laging naglalaban-laban. Uh, okay, lagyan natin. So make them describe all the things they don't like. And then make a list of that. Now, can you describe to me what you like to see in our class, in our online class? Uh, supportive, caring, helpful, respectful, kind. Okay, let's make a list of that. Now, class, this came from you. 
this didn't come from me. Sabi ninyo, ayaw nitong, ayaw nyo itong listahan na to. And sabi ninyo, gusto nyo itong listahan na to. Can we now commit as a class that we will not allow these things? We will reject these things that we came up with in the list and then that we will foster these things. Okay? This is going to be how our class is run this year because you were the ones who described this classroom you don't like and this class, online class that you like. That's uh, the strategy of Hal Urban. Make the students describe, make the students come up with a list. And the next time, the next time, alimbawa, uh, may absenteeism. <laughs> na problematic na student parang laging absent <clears throat> for one reason or another. Don't get mad. It's enough to say, uh, John, please keep in mind, we said we don't like these things. Okay? It came from you, not from me. Please do your best effort because we committed ourselves to reject these things. You see, the, um, how you run the class is just like that, no? Okay, yeah, nandito ang um, ating values, no? the core values. Okay, so uh, let's continue on keeping like a virtue of the month alive, even in an online setup. Kaya, kaya gawin yun. Or if you have, um, I don't know how many core values you may have, you divide it into the school year. Uh, if there are five, then uh, in the five months, one virtue for every two months, but keep it alive. That's the idea of having a virtue of the month. Meaning to say, as you, as you run the school year, you continue being concerned that the students hear about values, talk about values, teachers discuss values, kahit anong subject ang tinuturuan natin. And then the teachers try to connect these virtues with whatever they're teaching, English teacher, reading teachers, when they discuss the literature, they will connect the virtue of the month, the virtue of the quarter, the virtue of these two months to um, the discussion in that subject. Okay, so we keep it uh, alive. Now, just very quickly, I usually talk about this in classroom management. Here are six levels according to Kohlberg of moral development. Bakit nagpapakabait ang isang tao? The lowest level of moral development is I don't want to get into trouble. In other words, gagawa ng tama ang studyante kasi sabi ni ma'am may parusa, may sanction, may detention, may punishment. So, magpapakabait just to avoid a punishment. That's the lowest moral development. That's why teachers, we have to refrain from words like you better watch out or else. Ah, that's fostering the lowest level of moral development. Para bang magpapakabait siya just to avoid a punishment. Here's the second level of moral development according, according to Kohlberg. Ay, magpapakabait ako kasi sabi ni may reward. Ma manonood daw kami ng movie. May free time daw kami. Okay, but that is... Okay, that's better than avoiding a punishment. But we can still do better than this. Um, diba, I want a reward. Mahilig yan sa, ano, especially sa mga kinder, grade 1, grade 2. Yung may mga ano, no, um, star, yung bibigyan ng um, uh, rewards. Ganyan. That's second level of moral development. Here's the third level. Bakit siya magpapakabait? I want to please somebody. I want to please the teacher. I want to please my parents. Okay, at least that's not just to avoid the punishment or to get a reward, but it's nice to please somebody. Pero, uh, again, we can still do better than this because in real life, in fact, um, sometimes kahit anong ganda ng trabaho mo, parang my parents are not pleased. The boss is not pleased. Is that reason to stop doing the good? No, you continue doing the good because it's the right thing. Here's the fourth level of moral development. I follow the rules. There are people who are like that, no? parang very strict about rules. They want to follow the rules. Very nice because 
good moral development yan. Can you imagine if all people in the world follow all the rules? It would be a better place. But again, in real life, sometimes heroes are those who go beyond the rules. <laughs> Jesus Christ broke rules. He performed miracles even on a Sabbath because charity above all, love for people, love for God above all. So sometimes there's more to life than just rules. Number five, bakit ka nagpapakabait? Because I am considerate of other people. Sorry, wrong spelling. People, not people. <laughs> so, uh, your students will do their best to study and to study hard because they see that the teachers are putting in sacrifice to be able to teach online. Oh, kahit yun lang. Be considerate naman of the sacrifices of your teachers, of your parents. But the highest level of moral development, which explains why I'm touching on this, is because when people are guided by core values, when you as teachers are able to say, class, class, I expect best behavior from you. I expect um, hard work from you. Why? Because you are carrying the name of St. Paul University. You see, I'm not saying I'm going to punish you. I'm going to reward you. I'm going to... No, you're saying, dala nyo ang pangalan ng skwelahan natin. Ha? So please, be a good person. Good parents do that. Good parents say that when they tell their child, anak, magpakabait ka ha. Dala mo ang pangalan ng pamilya. Dala mo ang pangalan natin. When the parents are able to say that, ibig sabihin, napaliwanag na ng mga magulang sa anak ang ibig sabihin ng kanilang pangalan. We are kind. We are courteous. We are good people. We are respectful. We are honest. We are upright. We are moral. All those things, napaliwanag na nila. And you, as teachers, should be saying often to your students, class, ito ang core values ng ating skwelahan na this is what we stand for. That's why, please, don't get into scandals. For example, dala nyo ang pangalan ng ating skwelahan. May, may nobody accuse us or accuse you of uh, being this or that, which goes against our core values. That's the purpose of this uh, sixth level of moral development that we want our students to continue thinking values, thinking what do we stand for as a university? What do we stand for as a Paulinian? And that is what we should be able to implant in the minds of our students. Sabi ko sa parents, when I addressed them last week, the greatest legacy you parents can leave behind your children is a strong conviction I have to be a good person. Well, let's apply this also to teachers. Teachers, the greatest legacy, pamana, inheritance that you can leave behind your students is a strong conviction. I have to be a good person, moral, upright. Kasi yun ang tinuro ni ma'am. Kasi yun ang tinuro ni sir sa akin. So, your rules set the tone even in this online setup. So please make sure you are very clear with your students about your procedures, your routines, your rules. So pag nagtawag ka ba ng synchronous class, sasabihin ng schedule 8 o'clock, you want them to be online at 8 or you want them to be online by 7.55 so that you have five minutes of um, allowance. Make it clear. Because that is what will set the tone for the students. And then when we say, uh, I want you all to be in the Zoom room, Google Meet room at seven, five minutes before time, that you yourself are there. Be clear about the ground rules. Specify what you expect to see from your students and what is unacceptable. Make it very clear to them from the very beginning. That's why Tamasi Hari Wong Paren the author of First Days of School. The first days of school in the face-to-face -face or in the online setup, 
<clears throat> continue to be very important, continue to be crucial. Discuss the rules with the students as well as the character traits that are embodied <clears throat> and built by each rule. <clears throat> In other words, you make rules because you tell the class, because I am interested in seeing you develop whatever value it is, whatever virtue it is, um, whatever um, how the pillars of character you may be building for your students. Of course, in any character building, there's no substitute to example. Be sure to be a good example yourself as well to your students. How do you react, for example, when you encounter technical difficulties? Do you uh, get upset? Do you lose your patience? Do you, the students are watching and they are learning how it is to be in the situation where you are, you encounter um, problems like that. Complete your own work on time, be neat and punctual, and always show respect for others. As you show this, you also demand this from your students. Allow students to suggest helpful rules that could benefit the class. Because this online setup, everyone is learning. I mean, please don't uh, pretend to be expert. <laughs> when you start meeting your students in this online setup, no need to try to look like you are an expert. All of us are grappling. There are many things that we have not been trained yet to do in this online setup. So allow students to suggest helpful rules that could benefit the class, that could benefit you as teachers, and that could benefit the students um, as they go through this challenging um, setup. And then always maintaining uh, positive, Positive mindset, positive attitude, positive um, bearing. And then praise students who exhibit good behavior and good character in this online setup because they're always punctual, because they submit things on time, because they're, uh, they retain that um, kind of character that you want to build in your students precisely. Employ a reward system for good behavior, such as points or gold stars. Um, I love a class where students are trying to compete with each other in doing good, in doing the right thing, in being punctual, in being participative, in being supportive, in being helpful. Look for ways of being able to, um, well, this is a way of precisely fortifying values, virtues, character building. When I give a session on classroom management, I usually talk about these things, no? strategies that many teachers have used um, to be able to foster good attitude, good behavior, good character. Even in an online setup, the good deeds bowl, where you are trying to fill up a bowl every time you catch somebody doing a good deed, you put a marble or a pebble or a paper that you form into a bowl, ball into that bowl. You are always on the lookout for people doing good things. Jan, I heard you helped Joanna, who was absent last meeting. Good job. That's what it means to be caring, to be helpful. Uh, you have made the class win a marble in the good deeds bowl. And then the idea is when they get to fill up that bowl, that bowl with uh, good deeds, marble or pebble or paper that you form into a um, bowl like that, then the class is up for a reward. That kind of reward system or the trophy technique, you group them into groups. Better yet, each group comes up with a name. And then you will say, this week in the online classes, the group that did the best in the quizzes, that participated the most in the recitations, that was most supportive in helping um, the other classes, the group that um, um, did the best this week is, whatever group it is, they have the trophy this week. Next week, let's see whose 
group will have the trophy. It can be a literal trophy. It can be a virtual trophy. It can just be a, a certificate. It can be, but the idea is groups trying to compete with each other in doing good, in being good. I love a class where students, groups are competing, trying to outdo each other in doing the right thing. And many more other strategies that uh, I'm sure you will be able to uh, get to know along the way. There are many ways of being able to foster uh, good deeds, good behavior through recognition system. Okay, let's move on. Number three, encourage good role models. Whatever subject you're teaching, look for those good role models that you can use as examples for your students. Mathematicians, scientists, for example, who displayed extraordinary perseverance. Um, Thomas Edison, not giving up even after failing more than 1,000 times in trying to discover the light bulb. That's a good role model. Characters in the literature book that you are reading with your class, there are some characters there that you can present as, you see, if this character is a Paulinian today, he or she would be an ideal Paulinian with all these core values that the school stands for. So things like that. Whatever subject we're teaching, we find ways of being able to introduce our students to appropriate role models, good role models. And then, you know, even if sometimes it has nothing to do with your subject, but you are meeting your students after that headline last night, after that headline the other day of a corrupt politician, let's say, who is found to be guilty of corruption and embezzling funds, you talk to the students about um, people who are not good role models or the other way around, um, heroes who are reported in the news yesterday. Don't be afraid to talk about them in your class today, uh, in your next discussion with them. That is what it means to be a teacher of character, always on the lookout for anything that he or she can bring in the discussion that will help form character of the students. Make an effort to point out positive character role models in history, literature, science, arts, or whatever subject it is you're handling. And then with this online setup, well, invite friends, family, or role models to appear on screen, to talk to your students, to be able to address the students, alumni, graduates, alumni, staff, other teachers, student leaders, guests. I mean, that's one of the positive sides of this online setup. Suddenly, you can invite a, a, a relative uh, who is in the US to be a guest in your class to discuss a specific topic that you are covering. Deliberately teach about people that your students can emulate, people who can, be, who can serve as role models. And then, this is what I was more or less talking about earlier, talk about the behavior of current world leaders, Philippine leaders, um, sports figures, and celebrities as well, that negative or positive, in order to drive home a lesson about character. Ask students if a person's words match their actions. And then to make the students realize there is something about hypocrisy that we should reject, about uh, not being truthful or honest or upright that we should reject. Discuss how life is improved with good character traits. You see, all these can be done in the online setup, and we should be always doing on the online set, even in the online setup. Insist on respect. Uh, even given this situation that we find ourselves in, your online room should be firmly established on a foundation of respect. That's why the you will, well, ask the students to allow 
somebody to contribute, to share, to recite, to speak up. And when somebody is talking, we all listen. That's part of respect. And that if there is an argument that happens, still there should be respect. At any point, we should not throw respect out the window. Self-respect and respect for others are the basis of all other positive character traits. Negativity and abuse of any kind should not be tolerated and met with appropriate consequences. Even in the online setup, find a way of being able to create an anti-bullying campaign. I mean, um, this cyberbullying is a reality and um, it's just that the young people are becoming more and more experts in hiding it or in uh, being able to do it without being uh, caught or without being um, having to make or having to be made to face the consequences. Never fail to extol the virtues of treating all classmates with respect and dignity. Build a caring community because this is one of the things that everyone has been deprived of by this online setup. I mentioned earlier about you, teachers. That is, um, on uh, a face-to-face -face setup, pagkatapos ng class, balik tayo sa faculty room, and we are with our colleagues who are also our friends. We have a caring community. Now we also are deprived of that. But the students too, don't forget, they are also deprived of it. And so we have to find ways of being able to create a caring community. A caring attitude can be encouraged by having a zero tolerance policy on name calling and character assaults or bullying, cyber bullying. Make sure that all students are included in activities, especially if you start doing group works. Or, that, in fact, we are discouraged from saying, choose a partner. No, make them. Um, pair them according to one um, basis or another. Uh, or, uh, okay, form groups of five. No, you. You will say, okay, I have divided you into groups of five. Uh, why five? Because one will do the PowerPoint, one will report, one will answer the questions, one will file, uh, make the final paper, and one will be the one to um, make sure that everybody works or supervise the um, distribution of work. You see, that you are not just telling them, uh, okay, form yourself into five, groups of five, and then this is the project, okay? Um, submit kayo and then only one will work and then all of them will get the same grade that is an abuse that is a travesty of group work which should never happen unfortunately every now and then makakadinig ka in one school or another it happens group work isa lang ang nagtrabaho pero lahat pare-pareho ang grade that's unfair and that should never happen in remote learning Children are missing out on same-aged peer interactions that are necessary to shape their social behaviors. That's why they need us to address this. They want us, teachers, to address this. How? Well, assign students to, group, uh, to groups to work on online projects, um, group output. But as I said, keeping in mind that you divide them into groups according to the tasks that they're going to fulfill or that they are expected to fulfill. Because chances are, in that group, may artist siya ang PowerPoint. May madaldal siya ang magre-report. May writer siya ang gagawa ng final paper. So, um, according to the, their talents and their, their abilities, that's what you call differentiated instruction <laughs> also. Allowing students to have online role play on a regular basis can help them become better team players. So anything that we can uh, make the students do that will make it necessary for them to work with other people, to work with other classmates, that's helping build a community.
a caring community. And then you can explore being able to bring random acts of kindness into the digital sphere. I'll show you this uh, sample of um, kindness challenge in campus that uh, students will be given this checklist and they check every time they're able to fulfill any of these challenges within that week. And the challenge is to try to do all the challenges. Now, this, is list, this list is based on face-to-face -face setup. Challenge the students to come up with 25 acts of kindness that they can do online. And then in one week that they will try to do as many um, that they are able to come up with in that list. I love a class where students are trying to outdo each other in doing good, in completing a challenge, in being kind. I love a school where, can you imagine if all the students are trying to accomplish, fulfill as many of these random acts of kindness online? The, that's the idea, to make them build a list that can be done, random act of kindness, uh, that can be done online. Whether it is just sending a positive message to a friend, um, befriending uh, a new uh, classmate that they um, are not connected yet, and then they will become. So there are many acts of kindness that they can do to challenge themselves online. Volunteerism. Highlight the virtues and importance of volunteerism at this time of the pandemic when there are many people suffering. Start online volunteer programs among your students, whether it is okay, online volunteers that will uh, pray for all the victims of COVID who have passed away, or uh, families, consoling families who are deprived of even being able to say goodbye their last goodbyes to their loved ones who died because of COVID, because IATF ruling immediately cremation. No one allowed inside the room of COVID positive victim. So um, creativity is the way, but the heart is key. There are many things that they can come up with that will foster volunteerism. I mean, look at this. I'm sure you have read about it. You have seen it in social media, Facebook and Twitter, being reported in uh, Rappler Community Pantry. Fund me initiatives for uh, every so often. You see that uh, Gcash, any amount will do. Or please share the post because the family, the mother, the father are both in ICU. Well, or simply prayer warriors that you lead a group that will uh, host a rosary every night for those who are sick, those who are suffering, those who are left jobless because of this COVID um, pandemic. Spread good vibes uh, in the face of all this um, negativity of politicians uh, destroying each other because election time is uh, around the corner. Mental health checkups fact checking for the good i mean as a as a group of students for example uh, looking for those fake news that are being spread and then tagging them reporting them as a group um, vote right campaign we have to make sure the students are made conscious of their social responsibility civic responsibility of choosing the right um, leaders, trumping the trolls, because especially because of the campaign around the corner, some politicians are using paid trolls to spread fake news, to destroy reputations. To so, let's have volunteers who will um, either put a stop to this, or report them, or um, spread the truth. And then, what else can volunteerism, volunteer activities be doing? Students, 
who will provide encouragement for teachers, support for teachers grappling with technology, support for students grappling with internet, support for all, support for school staff grappling with joblessness because they are contractual and the school is closed. They have no work. They are trying to survive. Um, merely uh, resorting to uh, or expecting ayuda. There are many people who are in this situation right now. Or students, for example, should be made to help the school in enrollment, in getting students, in getting um, new students coming into our school. Why not? There are many ways. There are many things that students can be made to do as part of fostering volunteerism. Creativity is the only limit, but the heart is key. The idea is, gusto kong lumaki ito mga batang ito with the heart for the school, for people, for others. Well, let me go very quickly over the last character in action. Throughout the school year, challenge students to create class projects that can benefit the school or community. Again, we're back to creativity is key. I mean, creativity is the way that the heart is key. Brainstorm with your students ideas that will cultivate the pillars of character, your core values, what the school stands for as a school. Strive for a strong community spirit. Make your students concerned about the uh, fellow uh, students who may be suffering, parents of their classmates or their schoolmates who may um, have caught the virus and are positive and need of prayers especially. But if they can even, many schools have done that um, because both parents are in the ICU, and then the classmates would pour in whatever support they can get. No amount is too small. Or the, the class will lead a uh, nightly rosary for the, um, for the family, for example. But that's it. This opportunity, this situation now calls for opportunity to strengthen even more our community spirit have older students manage these projects, work with students to plan the steps necessary. So um, all these are very important to not just create a caring community, but even to build a strong community spirit and then to bring out the best among our students, even in this setup that we find ourselves in. Use your imagination. The sky is the limit. There is so much that we can do. There is so much to be done. But clearly, all of us have to be very convinced. Oo nga, ang dami pa natin pwedeng gawin. Character formation must go on. The online setup is not an excuse to say, wala eh, uh, ganito talaga. Hindi bali na. No, we are still looking for ways, concrete ways and means that we can make the students continue growing in their values, in their virtues in spite of the setup. I'd like to end my presentation and then maybe we can have a few minutes for Q&A. Again, like what we did with a parent session, I want us to go to the teacher or the master teacher, St. Joseph, in this his special year. He is the terror of demons who will help us fight against all those problems that I mentioned at the start, the crisis, um, the self-centeredness, the vanity, the um, addiction to gadgets. We need St. Joseph, the terror of demons, to help us battle all those things. And so I invite you, as a way of ending my session today, going to the teacher of the master teacher with his prayer of teachers to St. Joseph. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O blessed St. Joseph, guardian of the child Jesus, we pray that you will help us in our daily troubles and tribulations as we try to pass on to our students all the teachings that they need to be able to succeed in their chosen professions. Help us to teach and help them to learn. 
guide us all as you guided your most holy son, Jesus. Obtain for us the graces we need, not only to teach and to learn, but to stay on the right path shown by the light of Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, my dear teachers. Uh, I know it's not very easy to be listening to a two-hour talk, but um, I hope I've been able to get across the most important message. Let's continue on building character in spite of this online setup, in spite of the difficulties given by this situation. Thank you very much, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Yes, thank you, Mr. Yantoy. As always, we are learning a lot from you. You know, um, sometimes the teachers, um, they don't have questions. They just need some inspiration. No? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'd like to suggest, uh, you know, if you're looking for some inspiration, um, look for movies like uh, The Ron Clark Story. I'm sure it's available in YouTube. It's a story of a teacher on his first year as a mm. teacher, Ron Clark story. Um, I, in fact, downloaded the video from YouTube starring Matthew Perry. And it's something mm. that you can uh, find time to watch so that you get inspired to be the best teachers you can possibly be. And today, he's one of the best teachers in the world. He even put up his own Ron Clark Academy. And mm. If you can find, or Tuesdays with Morty is very inspiring, mm -hmm. um, as well as many other teacher movies. Because as I said, sometimes it's not that you have questions, it's just that you need inspirations. <laughs> St. Paul University, Quezon City, awards the Certificate of Appreciation to Mr. Emmanuel Rentoy for sharing his expertise with the basic education faculty in a webinar titled Character Formation Must Go On, Strategies for the Digital Generation. Given this 10th day of September in the year of our Lord 2021 via Zoom. Signed, Sister Eileen Bonifacio, SPC, Principal Basic Education Department. Thank you. Thank you so much once again, Mr. Rintoy, for sharing your wisdom with us. And now, to wrap up the afternoon with, with some closing words, may I now call on Ms. Mercedes Remedio. Uh, good afternoon, my dear colleagues. And uh, to Ms. Padilla, Sir Lloyd, and Ms. Jessica, Thank you for making this encounter possible. To Mr. Emmanuel Rentoy, of course, thank you for, for accepting this in, the invitation of coming to our, our midst virtually to remind us again of our focus as Catholic formators to continuously bring in character formation among our students and that we must do even more to do given the environment we are facing now. Character formation among the youth nowadays isn't an easy mission. This pandemic took all other av avenues where characters be formed, yet uh, the more we, we should not stop because that is what we are called for. Um, there is no really way out, sir. Tamaka sa sinabi mo that we have to embrace this digital lifestyle thrown to us by this pandemic. Ironically, we are pushed to our limit, and uh, yet we become technology savvy. So to say, <laughs> uh, truly, we are grappling uh, at first. But along the way, we learn. Uh, when you mentioned, sir, that we should, we need to be forgiving, to be understanding, to be patient, more than ever to our to others, more especially to ourselves. Uh, naramdaman ko yun, sir, kasi truly kahit teachers po kami, we also uh, feel sad of what is happening and. 
pasok nga yung sinasabi ng sir to be in communion with others pa din, to have an open, uh, to have the community even the more. I did not ask my friends, pero let me share. There was an occasion, there were occasions actually, sir, that we, we, feel, we feel very down. And uh, teacher na at that time, sobrang down. And so the only way out for us is bring up each other. And then we would start uh, sharing, sharing our pains, our mga iniisip and all that. And thank you for reminding us to be forgiving, to be understanding, to be more patient with the situation that we have now. And uh, thank you also for Sister Eileen, because uh, Sister Eileen said so as uh, she started uh, the, you know, that he, wa he wants us to be free from stress. And yeah. uh, we will continue to remember, uh, rem uh, remember all those that you have reminded us, things that we should uh, do as teachers things that we should practice or exercise as teachers say for example those or, or remind ourselves that we are still the most important factor in bringing uh, our students uh, in making our start students to be formed and informed to grow and to learn uh, that we can still make a difference in spite of what is given to us. With the different platforms that we are using, we have to uh, show still uh, that uh, we are their teachers and we can make a difference out, out of these platforms that we use. Um, that we must go further from what has been taught to us to go an extra mile to translate learnings so that we can help our children grow. Um, true enough, we should not give up. The more that we should not give up and always remember that our, our, our profession is the noblest of all. Uh, fostering relationship among children, among uh students nowadays is hard yet there are true true so true, 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 true. there are many ways to do it uh thank you also for the strategies you have mentioned sir that we can look up to uh, so far we are not uh, uh some so far we're doing uh, we are on the right track with regards to these pillars of character we ask our students to, all of us actually, even the employees, to still to always remind ourselves of these five core values, uh, so that we can be alive again in our mission, our vision, as as an institution. So we 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 always uh, put in mind this those faith affirmations and make uh, make each one to recite always as much as possible leave mm -hmm. out these five affirmations that we have and, uh, yes with this strategies still we have to remain as teachers an exemplar of character to our students to maintain positivity to maintain a good mindset so that our students may uh, take it as um, may, may, may have these examples and uh, somehow emulate because up, after all, even with the situation, students still believe to their teachers. Thank you so much, sir, and good afternoon. Well said, thank you. Thank you very <laughs> Sorry, much. Sorry, <laughs> And thank you, thank you also, Ms. Romeo. And we'd like to invite everyone to uh, answer the evaluation form, which you can access through the link in the chat box.
Okay, so we have reached the end of our webinar program. This has been your moderator, Marie Claire Remo, saying, keep up the good fight because the charity of Christ impels us.